Greetings, Devilings, and welcome back to a game whose demo I checked out about a year or two ago in a first day. So I guess this makes this a retaste of Apico. Apico, Apico, I'm actually not entirely sure. I'm sure there are lots of opinions in both directions. And I've just noticed that that little A there is the shape of an apiary. How delightful. Now, this game is, or was, the uh, passion project of two brothers. Whether it remains uh, two brothers on the development team, I'm not entirely sure. But this game is, as you can probably already tell from the backdrop, a game about beekeeping. Beekeeping, bee breeding, and ultimately bee conservation. Uh, this has a more than passing similarity to uh, certain Minecraft mods that probably don't need a particular call out if you've played forestry though there we go I've, I've done the call out you're gonna find a lot of similarity in the kind of apiculture core gameplay loop in this game but it is expanded in this game because it is quite tightly focused on the apiculture in particular there is an awful lot that has uh, come about since the last time we visited the game so even if you have checked out my previous video on the demo there will probably be uh, more than a few twists and turns with this one not least starting with the fact that it's kind of got a story now a little stardew valley-esque in fact but with that said i do hope you're going to enjoy this video and if by the end of it you decide that you enjoyed what you saw and you want to see more then do consider leaving a like or a comment down below and while you're down there if you enjoy the game then you will be able to find a link in the video description on where you can get it for yourself but with that said let's go ahead and jump into the game because it's always easier to show rather than to describe and uh, since I am at the moment clean shaven which is uh, not a normal state for me to be in we're gonna go without the beard there aren't very many uh, beard options regardless and my hair is in fact up in a ponytail as I sit recording this so I guess this is about as close a representation of me in avatar form as we're going to get. But with that, let's jump into the game. Dear Avak, it was so lovely to get your letter last week. I think it's wonderful that you're taking an interest in beekeeping again. Both me and Gramps had always hoped you'd want to carry on the keeper family tradition, and there isn't anything more enjoyable than being out here with the bees. Plus, I'll say it'll be a well-earned break from that busy city job of yours. Aha, this sounds a little bit familiar. I've posted you a ticket for the next boat that comes in. Skipper will be overjoyed to see you again after all of these years. Have a safe journey, and I'll see you soon. Love, Nana. That is, that is actually quite lovely. Here we go. Ho ho! We made it, Avak. And just as you were getting your sea legs. Ho ho ho! Here we are, Port Apico. And what a lovely day it is, and what a lovely word that is, my lord. It was jolly good to have you aboard again, matey. Takes me back. Do you still remember your way around the place? Oh, oh no problem. Here, have my map. I know this place like the back of my book. Okay, so in addition to the fact that, uh, you know, it's a, it's the the yield yarn of uh, busy city slicker, stressful job decides to reconnect with his past and his roots by returning to nature. But also, I have a map for the place. Who has a map of where they live? I, I'm, I'm now intensely aware that maybe I'm the weird one for never having had a map of where I live. I don't know. When, even when I moved to a new place, I just walked around it and my legs remembered the, the way to places I might want to go. I, I don't know. I've never owned a map of a place that I've lived. Is this normal? Does everyone else have these maps but me? I'm now suddenly worried about it. Anyway, you best go see the old girl. She's still uh, just at the end of the pier and down to the left. She's been up buzzing ever since you let her. If you need anything, though, just holler. I've got quite a few trinkets you might fi find useful. Now, off you go. Luck of the hive mother be with you. And remember, a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. <laughs> that uh, has uh, a certain familiarity to it. And something about uh, good timber never grows with ease, etc., etc. Uh, Nana Belia. Just, just accept it. There were lots of puns before when all we were doing was reading a tutorial guidebook, but now, <laughs> now there are NPCs. Oh my lord, the puns will be unending. Oh, Avak, it's so wonderful to see you. Let me get a good look at you. Have you been eating properly? Who's been feeding you? Have you had breakfast? Shall I put the kettle on? Yes, yes, you should, Nana. Please and thank you. How was the boat over? Did you feel sick or? <sighs> Sorry, there's me getting carried away. It's just so good to see you again. I was so excited when I got your letter. When you said you wanted to get into beekeeping, I was so pleased. It's been a while since we've had a keeper in the family. Your father never cared much for it. 
I was looking through Grandpa's old things and found the guidebook he was writing. There seems to be quite a lot missing, so maybe you can fill in the rest. It would mean a lot to both of us. You can view the guide at any time with G. If you ever get stuck, just have a look through and I'm sure some of Grandpa's wisdom will guide the way. Well, anyway, look at me. I took the ear off a bee. I better let you get settled. You probably want to go and explore the island. If you need anything, I'll be back at the house. Be, sa be safe, Nana, really. <sighs> but this is something that, uh, for those of you who did check out the uh, the first taste of the demo way back when, this is completely new. We've now got a town. We've got things that we can do in the town. We've got people we can talk to. We've got Nana. Uh, most people seem to have crates. Uh, hmm. I'm not really sure that I want to take from them, but it looks like I can use all of their uh, furniture, which is actually quite cool. That is really, really nice, actually. Steps walked. Naps taken. I, what, I didn't even, I was just checking Nana's bed to make sure it's the correct firmness, that's all. My lord, I wasn't napping. How dare. Uh, the were are these? Uh, the Becom, <laughs> Bec Beconomist. I, uh, I don't even. Uh, however, we can open this, sure. Uh, well, let's press a shift first. Uh, an old magazine. The Beconomist. Beekeeping legend, Belia Keeper, brings common bees back to Apico Island. Oh, right, okay, so this is probably going to set up the, th the first three. Apiarists all over, excited for her return and the future of apiculture. Then we've got the Beekonomist too. Species saved. Renowned beekeeper, Belia Keeper, is at it again. Forest bees at an all-time high. Pa, that's nothing, grumbled Benjamin. Benjamin, really? Local grumps and beekeeping star. A local grumps. Then, uh, species saved. Third time's the charm. Belia Keeper single-handedly restores the verge bee. Yeah, it, it, well, it's the first three um, bee populations that you start in the game. The Ape Academy ain't got nothing on our Belia, exclaimed Skipper. Resident Scallywag. Skipper isn't a Scallywag? How dare. Take that back, game. But there's uh, quite a lot of tools in there. Uh, I wonder if Nana would mind. Uh, nevertheless, we do have a, a guidebook to check out, and we'll go and uh, have a look at the town in just a moment. Let's get a start on this. Oh, the guidebook seems to be much better organized than it was before. All right. Welcome to Apico, a game about discovering and breeding bees. This book will serve as your guide throughout the game. If you get stuck, lost, stung by bees, this book is here to help. How exactly is it meant to help if I get stung by bees, though? Because I, I can't imagine that in a game that, that seems to have such a strong focus on the idea of restoring bee populations that we're meant to smush the bees with the book. So, uh, I, I don't know, is, is the cover uh, coated in some sort of anesthetic? Am I meant to vigorously rub the book on the bee sting to make it feel, uh, feel a little less angry? I don't know. Uh, you can open and close this book with G. That's exactly how it was in the demo. You can also close any box and all menus with escape. This is easily one of the best features in any kind of game that has a lot of uh, menus. And I've loved this feature ever since I, I um, was exposed to it in Open Transportation Tycoon. This is so useful. I wish more games had it. As you progress, you'll unlock new chapters, each with their own challenges and rewards. As this is your first chapter, have a freebie. Keep her safe. Her name is Beatrice. She is a free bee as well. It's like, oh, my lord. <laughs> I Again, I'm fairly soon I said this in the, the first day as well. I'm going to grumble, but secretly, this is basically a guilty pleasure. Don't tell anyone, but ah, oh, the, the bee puns, they're so bad, they're good. Let's, let's be honest now. Uh, getting around, just wasted. We can hover over things. Um, left clicking usually interacts with them. Uh, punch some trees, pick some flowers, scare some birds. Why scare the birds? What have you got against birds? Just go hog wild. Let's aggro some forest spirits and take this axe. Uh, was this written by a dappling? I have my suspicions. Uh, when you left-click on something, you will see whatever item is in your equipped hotbar slot or held with the cursor. Select that fancy axe we just gave you using hotbars 1 to 8, or rather hotbar keys. You can change your hotbar slot by scrolling. Now you can do some damage. Try not to think about the fact that the axe is made of wood, though. I said don't think about it, but I, I mean, it, it kind of makes sense if it's like a, a hardwood or a treated wood versus especially like a softwood tree, maybe. Go and uh, left-click on some trees with the axe. You can hold down the left-click button, too. Collect 10 logs and then come back here for your reward. That is really, really nice. The, the, the fact that you can just hold down instead of having to constantly click, it will save 
uh, on a lot. I don't necessarily want to chop down trees right outside uh, Nana's house, though, but there's a lot of trees in here. Uh, I'm sure no one will mind. Let me uh, grab this. I think we needed ten of them. Uh, let's go ahead, chop all these down. There's nine and eleven. Right, let's have a look what we've got next. We now get a workbench. Resource management. As you start the deforestation of this poor helpless... I am strongly starting to suspect that Grandpa was a dabbling. Uh, this book seems to to have a certain bias against trees. Uh, you're going to be picking up a lot of different things. While you can always see your hotbar at the top, you can press E to open your inventory. Left click will pick up any item in a slot and move it to any other slot. Right click will pick up half of a stack or drop one item from a stack you've picked up. And middle mouse button will collect all of the items in that menu of that type. That is especially nice. So we've got a chest for that one, nice. Crafting, time to get crafting. Grab that workbench we just gave you and plonk it down somewhere. Uh, once placed, you can left click on it, go and open the workbench and you'll see a recipe for a saw bench. Get yourself enough logs, craft one and come back here. Would you kindly, uh, hmm. Is it just me or are we now strangely compelled to do this? How curious. Fun fact, the workbench takes into account all items in any open menu, so you don't need to be carrying the items to be able to craft with them. That is truly marvellous. Uh, I'm just going to clear a little spot over here so that we can do a, a bit of working here. Uh, do remind me, I need to come back and replant these trees. Don't be fair. Uh, right, so we're going to pop this down. Now, you can basically freely place it, or you can shift-click to align it to a grid. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll align it to a grid. And we'll also pop down this little chest right there. And just to demonstrate some things, let's plonk all of that inside. There we go. Now I'm just going to switch that over to the side. Very nice. I love the little line showing which uh, inventory it's attached to. And now let's slide this one over here. And we've got the saw bench. Uh, we need tw uh, we've got 22 out of the 10 needed, which is marvellous. And there we go. Saw bench in my inventory. And escape to close all of that down. And now we can plonk the saw bench down. Boom. Right, what's the next on the list? We've got 20 new logs, very nice. Next step, that's all from this introduction, but don't worry, we're not going to leave you completely lost and alone with nothing but bees to keep you company. Though, I mean, that does sound great. As you discover and craft new items, you'll unlock new chapters. This game also is uh, the sort of game where, as you discover new materials, your crafting list will populate. Like, it'll just be greyed out until you have discovered the materials that are used to make it. So, uh, bear in mind, it's always worth checking back on, on your old workbenches. Um, as you do seven crafting, blah, 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 this chapter of the book will... Uh, where you'll be given different challenges and rewards, so make sure to keep an eye here. Now go, little one, be free! What? No, I'm not crying. It's just really dusty in here. That's all. Just dust! Go and take this with you. Another axe. Thank you very much. Now we've opened up a bunch of new things. Uh, right, I'm probably not going to go over the tips and tricks because it is generally just... Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to read it out. I'll click on them because they're all going to give uh, little bits of something. So this one is just letting us know that if you click on the question mark, it'll give you information on what a uh, inventory menu is, and you can also drag them around, which we've already done a little bit. Advanced controls is letting us know that you can shift click to move things around. I mean, that's pretty standard fare at this point, though the little uh, cursor here, if you have more than two menus open, uh, sorry, two inventories, it wouldn't be uh, obvious where you're trying to move things with shift click. And so the little circular button here, you can click on it to pin it. And that makes this inventory the destination target for any shift clicking. That is a super, super useful little feature. I actually quite like it. Uh, you can also press Q while hovering over any menu to set it as the target. Oh, that's that's cool. I, uh, I, I didn't remember that from the demo. Uh, you've already amassed quite a horde of stuff. You can click on the little down arrow in some inventories to sort things alphabetically or middle mouse click on any empty tile. That's also very useful. Picture perfect if you like to take some pictures of your amazing uh, amazing base and all of your, your bee gardens and your apiaries. You can press P to remove the, the uh, overlay and UI. That's super useful as well. And finally, waiting around. Now, the interesting thing with this, and this one is actually worth uh, drawing attention to, you can make benches and beds. Uh, beds will be set as your spawn point. However, when you rest on them, after a few moments, time will speed up, and this is really useful for getting through the night or getting through inclement weather where your bees aren't going to be active. But whilst speeding up time will change um, from night to day quickly or from 
uh, will affect your, your plants and, and saplings and their growth speeds. It won't affect the bees being more productive. They will just be as productive and, and as they normally would be. It's just it'll be spread out over a longer time period, um, you know, uh, chronologically within game terms. Uh, I'm not sure why they, they've chosen that, possibly just to... Uh, I, I don't know, maybe uh, avoid some some sort of uh, issue with having lots of different hives around, or maybe they just feel that that would unbalance the game, since the game is so focused on bees, it's kind of taking the main core component out. Regardless, though, don't try to speed up time to get your bees to be more productive. It will not work. But there we are, we get a, a little bench. Now, as for the new sections, we've got tapping trees. Now, what's brown and sticky? Well, oh, okay, yeah, I guess so. But I was thinking more about... Ah, I remember that one now from the demo. Uh, it hasn't gotten any better since then. Collecting resin from trees will let you infuse your wood to make it more versatile and last longer. To get resin from a tree, you'll need to craft a tree tap. You can use a tree tap by equipping it and clicking on a tree. Now, interestingly, this has changed from how it was in the demo. You now need like a canister, I believe, to collect the resin, rather than it just coming out as like sticky globs of resin that you just collect. So that's actually pretty cool. Go finding bees. Well, let's get to why you're really here. Bees. To get started on your beekeeping journey, you'll need to find yourself some bees out in the wild. Different species of bees can be found in different areas. Try having a look around for bees flying around. Eventually, they'll head back to their hive. To start, you'll need a plain old common bee, a bee from the forest and a bee from the shores. Once you find a hive, you can open it with your cursor and have a look inside and take any of the bees with you. You can also pick it up with a hammer, carefully. Uh, I've also got flower power. Have you taken the time to stop and smell the flowers? Your bees certainly will. You can pick up flowers with your cursor and place them near your hive for your bees to visit. The flowers visited by bees will slowly spread and grow. Later on, when you have an extractor, you'll be able to get flower seeds from your hives based on the flowers they visited, and you'll even be able to discover new hybrid flowers. See, it's not just the uh, genetics of the bees, it's also the genetics of the flowers, which is actually really, really cool because they can cross-pollinate. Um, so we'll probably be having to grab that as well. So we need five of each type of flower, one of each type of bee. We also want to get a tree tab. And finally, now that you have a saw bench, you can start cutting up your logs into other materials. Place a log in the left input slot, and then you'll be able to see a little handle that you drag left and right. This is actually true for most of the game. It is not one of these games where you just click on, yeah, craft logs, and it just turns, oh, it's rather craft planks, and it turns logs into planks in your inventory. You actually kind of have to do, go through the mechanical motion of it. However, this is going to be very important over here. Eventually you'll be able to upgrade your tools and won't have to chop wood by hand, unless that's your sort of thing. No judgment here. This part is really, really important because I know some people that while the uh, the function of like sawing uh, planks, I'll quickly demonstrate it for you, is, you know, it's quite fun and gimmicky to begin with. It could become a bit of a grind over time. You can eventually automate these things, so it's definitely worth bearing that in mind. You're not always going to be doing it like this. Uh, we'll just get up 20, there we go, and I'll take all of these out. And there we are. New recipes are unlocked on the workbench. Uh, what else did we need? We needed 10 sticks, and sticks are made by uh, cutting up the planks. We get two sticks from each one, but I'll go ahead and make... 20. And much like Minecraft, there's a lot of things in this that are similar to Minecraft, or at least some Minecraft mods, you can buy music, and I I don't know, I've always enjoyed the idea that music is a reward, not just a given, and you can slowly build up your like in-game library of music, and maybe even tailor it. I don't know how in-depth that is in this game, but uh, certainly it occasionally plays music and you can buy other music, or at least I believe you can from some of the screenshots I've seen. Right, let's go and have a look. We've now got 50 planks from that, thank you very much. Basic tools. To collect certain resources, you'll need the right tools for the job. You can't just go around punching trees. Axes let you collect logs, pickaxes let you mine stone from rocks, spades let you play, uh, dig up placed seedlings and saplings, hammers let you pick up crafting items, beehives and tiles. If you make yourself one of each, I'll give you a bunch of rocks. Don't ever say I don't give you a nice thing. I mean, are these shiny rocks? Uh, you know you don't have to just live in the wilderness with your junk all over the place, right? I think it's time we got you building your own place. Place tiles and walls will automatically snap to the grid and you can hold it down left click to place multiple at once. If you make a mistake, you can use a hammer to pick it up. Rightio! Okay, so we definitely want to make a couple of tools and oh my lord, we've got so many things in here. Uh, magazine racks, used to saw magazine, a trash can used to get rid of items you no longer want, 
We've got the workbench, two different sizes of chests. Um, I don't know. It doesn't actually tell us how big these chests are. We've got the tree taps. We've got a predictor. Used to predict the potential offspring of queen. That's very useful. Then we've got uh, the kind of terrain. We've got fences, flower pots. We've got all sorts of things. I wonder if we can use flowers. Used to place flowers and prevents flowers from spreading. Ah. So if I don't want to carpet an area in flowers, why would I not want that? But uh, let's just say that it might be something that we would want to do. Then I can use these flower pots to give access to the bees uh, access to a flower to the bees, but prevent them from naturally spreading around. That's actually pretty cool. We've also got a brush here for painting. You can paint things. We've got the tree tap, the axe, the pickaxe, the spade, and the hammer. We want a pickaxe. We want a hammer. And ultimately, we also want a spade. Let me just quickly get us another 10 uh, sticks. There we go. And then, once we've gotten all of these together, we're probably going to go and have a wander, I think. Uh, let's grab the spade as well. Donk. There we are. Let's go and grab the basic tools. Thank you very much for the stone. With that, we're going to be able to make stone tools. Right, so get building is the next one. Tree tapping, finding bees, and flower power. Can I make the tree tap? I need some more sticks to make that. I'm not going to make the, the stone tools just yet, but we've now got stone paths as well as a scraper, which we're going to need. I know I said I was going to go and talk to people, but first I do want to grab that tree tap because I can get that going straight away then and just get that out of the way. There we go. The early game is going to be a lot of going back and forth to the guidebook because it, it does feed you this information fairly fairly gently. Now, we're going to want to place one of these down, so let's make that first. There we are. Now, as far as I recall, these are one and done. Single-use tree taps used to extract resin from a tree. Once a tree has been completely tapped of its resin, it never regenerates it. That does not come back. Uh, so, you can just allow it. This bar right here is the amount of resin that's in the tree. This is like an internal reservoir available to be collected. And this is the liquid output canister that you need. And if you click on the little question mark there, it'll tell you all of that information, which is super, super useful. Uh, let's go to the guidebook. Claim our little canister here. It rains. It pours. Don't you just love the rain? Actually, yes, I do. I'm a bit of a pluviophile. Oh, well, bad news about this chapter, I'm afraid. Uh, as you might have realized, not all bees like the rain, but some bees love it. It's also a really useful source of water. If only we had a way of collecting it, though. Oh, wait, you do. You can craft rain tanks to collect and store rainwater. Later on, when you're all stock stocked up on honey, we can combine the two to make Apicola. Very well. I need to make a rain water barrel and keep it flowing. Now you've been tapping these trees, you probably want to start collecting resin somewhere. You can craft canisters using waterproof, which you can make from lily pads that grow in the shallows. Canisters are portable, but can only hold a small amount of liquids. Barrels can't be moved, but can hold much larger quantities. Be careful with your hammers, though. A broken barrel will spill your precious fluids everywhere. Okay. Duly noted. I'm going to allow that to... Oh, well, actually, you know what? I'm going to pop this little canister in there and allow it to start to collect the uh, the resin. But with that done, let's go and have a bit of a chat with people because that was an awful lot of reading and I do apologise for it. This game has a, is a bit front-loaded with information, I, I must confess. Right, let's have a... <laughs> Barnaby. Every single one is going to be is going to be bee-related. What's buzzing, cousin? Really, Barnaby? Are you actually my cousin? Absolutely swell to meet a fellow scholar. Mm, that doesn't sound much like something a cousin would say to another cousin. Uh, we can buy bees from here. Oh, that's actually uh, quite nice. So uh, we don't have any rubies. <sighs> Again, it will be unending. Uh, hello? Oh, Benjamin. We've seen your name before. Dr. Benjamin BHD. Oh, it's you again. What do you want now? So you've decided to come back, huh? Thought you were too good for the to be a humble beekeeper. Bah, kids these days. Well, I mean, maybe maybe it was this kind of attitude that drove me away. Uh, you have a cooler. A he oh, that's pretty cool. Do we build enclosed spaces to keep different ooh different kind of temperature bees? A climatizer, a smoker, microscope, honeycomb, basic apiary, wood frame, advanced apiary, and you've also got a, a special deal on treated frames right now. Oh, that's changed over to royal jelly. But we've got a couple of things in here. We've got some seeds. We've got a common queen. 
We've got stone uh, apis. A strange spicy substance formed from pollen and honey that helps give homemade apicola, oh sorry, apicola, a kick. Produced by dream bees, used to infuse apicola. Hmm. We've also got a predictor over here. We don't have any bees to place in it, though. Let's close all of that. We've got a bookshelf. Uh, some more books and a mysterious statue. Uh, flowers found. Bees discovered. Oh, that's interesting. From what I remember, there were only going to be 30 different types of bees. So that's actually increased to 35 now. There are 14 of 43 quests have been completed and three of 13 flowers have been found. Total completion, 11%. My lord. We've also got a microscope. This would allow us to find out the natural stats of bees. We will come back to that in time. Uh, this is an extractor. If you've seen the uh, first taste demo, you're already familiar with these um, devices. These are used for removing uh, honey from frames. I'm not going to mess around with anyone else's belongings. I refuse. This is not that sort of game. It could be, but I refuse. Something has got to be sacred. What have we got over here? That is an anvil. Oh, you can repair things. That's actually pretty cool. That's super cool. Hello, uh, Beatrix. Oh, I love their names. Oh, hey, Ava. How are you today? I'm very well, Beatrix. Oh, look at you go. We'll make a carpenter out of you yet. If you want to upgrade your machines, you should start collecting lily pads so you can make some waterproof. Ah, yes, yes, we were talk told about that. We can buy a bookshelf. I'm sure we can probably make one as well once we've uh, discovered enough items. We've got wood planks, sticks, uh, a squeezer. Use to squeeze resin from logs and acorns. Oh, that would be significantly easier than having to tree tap, especially because the tree tap is, again, you have to make the tap and it's one and done. Uh, you need to have discovered at least six bees to buy this. Uh, over here, we've got the uh, the total amount of discovered bees. A sign, uh, we've got wooden windows can be picked up uh, with a hammer. Okay, uh, I believe that there is some weird qualities with the windows in this game. They appear to glow. Uh, I don't want to worry anyone, but it seems that in this world, glass is uh, glowy. Uh, may maybe they make it out of, out of uh, photoreactive components. I don't know. Uh, Captain's orders. Hold shift for more info. Uh, okay, I need to... These are special quests that I need to have discovered at least 10 bees to play with. All right. We've done a lot of faffing around. It's time for us to be on our way, I think. Uh, be on our way. I'm going to accidentally do so many bee puns. I... Don't even... Ah, my lord. Beatrice, let's pop you safe in there. Uh, oh, actually. Sticky pearl. A pearl of pure resin formed from residue that clings to the worker. Produced by forest bees. Can be sold for rubies. And this is bee pollen. Used by many as a homeop uh, homeopathic medicine. Personally, it just makes me sneeze a lot. Produced by common bees. Can be sold for rubies. So these are how we're going to make some cash then. That's actually pretty cool. I'm going to want... Axe, pickaxe, hammer, spade. If I recall correctly, I do believe that uh, any items uh, that get completely worn out will be replaced if you've got uh, an example of that item in your inventory. Let's uh, clonk these up. There we go. We're going to leave no no uh, evidence of, of our presence here. And we've got a resin wooden canister. New to transfer liquids. There we go. Cells for 0 0.5 rubies all right now that tree can no longer produce any more sap so we're just going to chop that one down but i told you that we weren't going to leave a mark on the environment so let's just go ahead and plant down a bunch of trees there we are and we've also got oh you know what we've actually got quite a lot of these my lord uh there we go uh i think do we not have any bushes or maybe i didn't uh, dig up any shrubberies that's fine then Right, well, before we go, let's go and have a quick chat with our friend over here. Hello. Okay, you. So have a little chat at with me. Uh, I would like to sell some things. I would like very much to sell these, since it's the only use for them. There you go. Made 10 cash. Hooray! All right. Our entire first day spent just uh, saying hello to peoples around. Sorry, birds. Uh, but now... We're going to be off. Uh, I think it is time for us to go explore. Uh, let's just move those around a little bit. Can I sort my inventory? Oh, no. Oh, no. That is not what I intended. 
Damn it, game. You tricked me. Not best pleased about this, but we're going to grab as many lily pads as we can on the way. Uh, we also need to grab these. These are the blue flowers that we are going to need five of, I believe. There we go. Uh, let's keep moving them out of my inventory so I've got free space. Actually, I'm going to put sticks in there because if I'm just holding sticks, it probably won't matter. I don't believe we can place sticks down, so it's not going to attach to my cursor, which makes it a little bit easier to see what I'm collecting. Can I, can I grab this flower back here? I guess I can't. Uh, I can chop down the tree, though. Sorry, tree. You're in the way. There we go. And how many of those? We've only got four, so I need one more. I'm going to grab all of the flowers that I can, and then we're going to go and hunt for a place to call our own. There we are. I think that is that guy done. Flower power. We've now got uh, Abby's, fo Abby's folio. Oh, my lord. All right. Well, with this, we can now see more information. So, oh, this guidebook has got its own quests. Crossbreeding flowers is easy. Your bees do all the hard work for you. When a bee visits a flower, it collects some pollen, seeds, and all sorts of other flower goop and takes it back to the hive. When using frames in your apiaries, this goop collects in the frames and gets all mixed together. Based on the flowers your bee visits, you'll get different seeds when you extract your frames. If you're lucky, the different seeds can mix, giving you a new species, a hybrid seed. And then we've got information about honey rose. Known for its sweet scent, the honey rose is the most common flower in the archipelago and is renowned by beekeepers for its marvellous calming effects on apiaries when smoked. This flower has no special effects. The scent of this flower is known to calm the following species. A murky bee that we don't actually know. But down here we can see that if these cross, if the uh, honey rose and swarm wart will get a bee's knees and honey rose and beekeeper's delight gives us the golden rod. Uh, Swarmwort, this delightful aquatic lotus-like flower, thrives in shallow areas around land. The blue dye produced by processing the swarmwort is one of the most popular dyes used in fashion. I see. Uh, this one will calm two different types of bees. The smoking element was not something... Like, uh, are there aggressive bees now? or I, I, the, This wasn't in the demo, so I'm actually quite interested in about that. And beekeeper's delight. When the sun shines bright, the beekeeper's delight shines almost as brightly back. Only found in temperate climates, it seems as, it's seen as a symbol of good luck and a blessing from the hive mother, her scent. Okay, and this one also calms the murky bee. But this one calms the murky bee and the hermit bee. Duly noted. Duly noted. Uh, doesn't look like we've got anything else to do there. So next up, we need to go and find some bees. Now, there's a forest hive over here. Let me... Try and get... Oh, my lord. The forest is quite dense around here, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to have to cut my way over there. And just so I can see it clearly... There we go. A forest hive. Let's have a look inside. Now, we've got a couple of drones. Uh, purebred forest drones. We can make a forest queen, like, quickly, just uh, continue it on. Or we can collect the bits and bobs. Now, I'm going to... As a general rule... Say it's always worth having these hives producing um, producing offspring. But I am totally going to take this with me. Uh, yoink. Ah, I can't now pick up the hive. Okay, well, I'll just leave that in there then and leave the drones there too for later. This is the output slot. Basically, the way it works, a queen will um, have a lifespan here. Once that lifespan... And that's a working lifespan. So since this... B isn't awake at night, it's not going to be counting down. But throughout the lifespan, based on the various stats that we can't really see at the moment, uh, the bee will create um, honeycomb in a wild hive. It's only ever honeycomb in a wild hive. Uh, for the other like plant-related stuff, you need to get that from a uh, an apiary, a man-made apiary. And then at the end of the lifespan, we'll produce offspring. In wild hives, the bees are always absolute clones of the first drone that is used to make uh, make the the queen. So if we have a look at this hive, uh, you can just take the, the drones out. You know, ooh, you're a blessed bee. Well, we'll pop you in the top. So this queen is going to be a pure clone of that one. It'll always be exactly the same. Uh, though it hasn't retained the blessed quality. But all of the other stats, although we can't see them right now, they are being copied over. So there we go, we've got a uh, virtual bee. Oh, I didn't pick up one of the uh, forest bees. That was a bit silly of me. Let me go and grab you. 
Uh, as a general rule, I think it's always worth wandering around and making sure that you uh, kind of turn over the hives. Always have a queen active in any any hive you pass by. Uh, you've already got it. I grabbed the uh, the honeycomb there. But now we need to go and find ourselves a spot to set up our own home. Uh, let's get you going. There is a blessed bee there. I have no idea what blessed bees do other than be blessed bees. Uh, so we're probably going to end up collecting them, I should imagine. We've got some lanterns down here. We've got a crate. Uh, beekeepers Delight. Okay, this, well, you know what, as, as far as places to start go, we've got some water nearby, we've got plenty of forest, we've got uh, a decent clearing already. Okay, give me just a few moments to clear this place up. Okay, that should do it. We've made a nice little area for us. Now, let's go and have a quick look at uh, some of the quests that we've completed. I believe there's only one, that is the Finding Bees quest. That's going to give us a natural hive. Beekeeping 101. Now that you've got some bees and a beehive, you can start breeding bees. To breed bees, place two bees in the left-hand input slot of a hive to create a queen. The queen will then get to work and start producing honeycomb. At the end of her lifespan, she'll produce a cute little offspring. All bees produced by natural beehives will be direct clones of the queen. Time to make an army of Beatrices. Now, the, the thing here that's really interesting is that uh, when you make a... Uh, a user natural hive. If you've got a queen that has stats that you don't want to risk reducing, for example, you've got a, a queen that's got some very nice stats or, or just one drone that has some very strong stats, but the only other drones you've got to uh, breed with it have some recessive dreams that might get passed on. Using a natural hive is a way of guaranteeing that the only the, the stats of the first drone get passed on. And it's a very, very powerful tool, I think. Right. That will be something we will get to. Uh, it wanted us to get 10 common bees, and we've almost already got all of the honeycomb. But I think the next thing we're going to work on is getting building. We want to set up a little place to call our own. And as you can see, I have been very busy filling this crate up. Let's uh, use the targeting there to make sure I do drop all of this in there. There we go. We'll even drop all of the bees and the beehive in there. There we go. Go perfect. I'll just keep that one to the side. Now, I've as I was gathering things up, we've unlocked an awful lot of other things uh, that we can build as well, uh, including natural hives. Though you'll notice I can't make forest hives. I can only find those natural hives. And as far as I'm aware, there are only natural hives for the three um, bees here: the, the common hive, the forest hive, and the verge hive. Uh, so that's a very important thing to bear in mind. You're only ever going to have uh, a couple of those. That being said, though, I would kind of love to get a uh, rain tank up and running. So before we get to everything else, let's go ahead and make enough waterproofing to get one rain tank. Because that's something that we need to be doing its job now. Um, should it start raining, I want it to start collecting straight away. Um, I'll just pop it, but uh, well, once I place it down, I can't really move it unless it's empty, but I'll pop it up there for the time being, and that should work okay. Right, so, as for the flooring, we want, uh, I believe we wanted 16 of both, so let's go ahead and get 16 there, and then 16 of this. There we go. Now, I'm not necessarily going to be using the wooden flooring everywhere. Uh, I may well go with the... Uh, tiled flooring instead and for that one I'm going to need some stone I like having different types of floors in buildings personally I think it looks quite nice I'll grab some of these well we we could use this just purely for paving outside as well so I, I could grab some of that we'll see what we do but we've already completed the quest so we can get ourselves a stone hammer very nice indeed you'll notice I've already got a stone axe because my two wooden axes did not last so you've built yourself a cute little house, or decided to embrace that forest hermit life. No judgment here. Uh, now, wouldn't it just be sweet as honey if you could paint that little house the, or color code your storage? Well, good news! You can craft dyes using flowers and glue, and use a paintbrush to paint any tile, wall, or object any color you like. If you decide you want to change the scenery, you can craft a scraper to remove it. Okay, so I've got to build a paintbrush for that one. But first, let's make ourselves a bit of a home. Uh, something like this should do. I want a space that will be our 
domicile to start with. Uh, we're going to need some more flooring, I think. Oop, wrong button. There we are. Let's move that across. Just a couple more should do nicely. Now, if you're wondering what the uh, tile here, I think that tile works really well as a door because you don't really have doors in this game. So you have to kind of get creative with the way you use those. Uh, maybe uh, propping this down. Can I place that there? No, I cannot. Very well. Uh, let's build this out maybe on this side, I suppose. I could totally do that, sure. There we are. So we've got a nice little, nice little home there. We can expand that out later as we, as we uh, want to. But this is just a little space for us to go in uh, right now. And along with that, I would very much like to bring my bench across. Uh, sure, let's grab one crate as well. This will be a crate for our various uh, building items. So we can just shunt those down there. And we'll have our bench just over here. There we go. We can now interact with the bench. There we are. Spawn point should be set. I don't know if the, if the bench will necessarily do that, but uh, we'll see. Uh, I would also like to bring in a lantern for the inside of the house. We don't have any of those glowy windows right now, so sadly, we're just going to have to live with that. Now, with that done, let's have a look. What's the next thing on our list? I could go ahead and do the uh, the painting, but I don't think I will. Uh, it rains, it pours. Well, we've already got that all set up, so we've now got two extra canisters. Now you've been tapping these trees, you probably want to start collecting the resin somewhere. You can craft canisters using waterproof, which you can make from lily pads that grow in the uh, shallows. Canisters are pot uh, portable, but can only hold a small amount of liquids. Barrels can't be moved, but can hold much larger quantities. Again, be careful with the barrel. So we now want to make a water barrel. Let's have a look at you and see exactly what you're going to require. It's almost certainly going to be much the same as we've had already. So we're going to want a bit more uh, waterproofing, uh, just a little bit more, thankfully. Uh, we're going to want the planks, which we've still got enough of. Perfect. Let's get that done. And then we can pop this down. We may as well pop it up there by the water barrel. And at this point, we shall be able to empty out that canister that we've got. This is the input point. This is the output point. So we're just going to shunt the water in there. I guess you could use it for other things as well. I imagine you could use a water barrel for storing, uh, sorry, a, a barrel for storing water. Uh, because it certainly would allow for more water than could be stored in just a rainwater tank. Uh, it might be something that we'll look at in the future. There we go. Cold infusion. At this point, you're probably up to your ears in resin. Ah, no, no, we are absolutely not. So it's time we put it all to good use. By infusing your wood with resin, you can make it stronger and more versatile, meaning you can make more improved items. Uh, to get started, you'll need to craft yourself an infuser, which uses resin to infuse planks and sticks. We'll get to that one, I think. For now, what I would very much like is a proper bee garden, and one that will allow for all of the basic types of hives. So let's get an idea of this one, two. So we're going to want this path to be out around here, I'm going to say. And sure, we'll just make it three tall. We'll have a common, we'll have a verge, and we'll have a forest uh, drone in here. So just give me a second to get all of that set up. And there we go. We've now got a, a verge hive, a forest hive, and a common hive. All happily Producing. I've also spread around some more of the flowers and the previous hives got moved around a little bit. There we are. Let's uh, grab more and more of the drones. Always more of the drones because we are going to need quite a lot to complete this next quest. Uh, that being said, uh, actually we've got a reasonable amount starting to build up already. Now, one of the things you're going to notice, <laughs> we've got a lot of bees. Uh, kind of too many bees, really. Uh, let's see, where are we? Beekeeping 101. We need 10, and we have a total of 7. Well, if I open this one up as well, we might have completed it. There we go. Because it's looking at all of the various inventories at the same time. There we are. Complete that. Pimp my hive. Now, honeycomb is delicious and crunchy. Stop eating it all. But there's far more useful things your bees could be producing. For that, you'll need to create your first proper apiary. 
out of wood and some of that honeycomb you've been making. Once you have one, you'll be able to use hive frames for ga to gather more produce from your bees. Plus, with an apiary, you'll not only be able to get different and more valuable produce, but you'll also be able to start crossbreeding different species and start discovering new ones. That does sound marvellous. We will get on to work with that straight away. But there is a couple of other things that we could also look at. Uh, for example, the bee box. Used to keep an unlimited amount of a single bee species. That is really, really worthwhile. We've got the basic apiary, we've got the large crate, and lots of honeycomb needed for that. The basic apiary, just by itself, only needs uh, wooden planks, which we've go we're going to have quite a lot of. We can just pop that in there. By the way, you can also store things in the storage spaces of, of most work uh, workbench um, construction. So, for example, I can just have the planks and the sticks in here and that saves a little bit of space on other boxes but we definitely definitely need at least storage for the verge the um forest and the common bees so give me just a moment and here we go we've got all of these uh, bee boxes up and ready for use let's collect all of our bees together okay so the way these work you prime it by putting in any kind of bee now it only cares about the, from what I can, I can see the, the kind of patterning on it. So a common bee will have this very specific pattern on its back. And the name will start with common. Uh, so there we go. Now that we've done that, we can prime this with any type of common. And you'll notice that because this is a preserved species that we've, we've already kind of maxed this out. And our understanding of it is as good as it's going to get. When we put it in here, we can see very specifically the traits this bee has. Uh, if we have a look over here, the, the traits are, I believe, lifespan, productivity. Uh, the last one, ooh, actually, I, I'm forgetting now what they uh, all are related to. Let's see if our... No, unfortunately, we haven't unlocked the uh, apiarist guide yet. But uh, these are all of their various traits, and you'll notice that the kind of um, hamburger symbol. It's not quite hamburger. It's got one too many layers for that. But that indicates what the recessive gene is. So for this bee, for example, its dominant genes are a three on lifespan and a four on everything else. But it has a recessive gene of a fifth level on the, uh, the blue bar and a recessive gene for four under lifespan. Uh, if we have a look at others, some of the, their recessive genes are lower or higher, but generally speaking, they're all around that kind of three to five range um, with recessives and dominant. And if we have a look at any particular one, we'll also see if they've got any blessed bees in there. It's actually really, really cool to be able to, at a glance, pick out bees with the characteristics you want for a new hive. Uh, we'll prime this one for forest bees. Let's get all of the forest ones in there. We've got very similar forest bees in here. They pretty much all the uh, same characteristics. And finally, we'll get the verge bees. There we are, marvelous, super happy with that one. Now, what is the next? We've got to get the basic apiary, the wooden frame, and that will get us the Belia's Almanac, and that is where we need to be. So for the, uh, the apiary, fairly simple one, that one. Let's go ahead and just craft that one straight up. And I believe we also needed one, oh, that was the wrong key, uh, one forest, f uh, one frame as well. So there we go, dunk. Pimp my hive complete. There we are. And there we go. We have got the Belia's Almanac. What's in the box? Really? A... <laughs> that is an interesting reference to have in this game. Okay. Uh, I'm betting at this point every crate you own is brimming with bees. No, actually. While good for, the st uh, for storing your items, they're not the most efficient way to store bees. Oh, I see. Ah, there I go. Sequence breaking once again. That's my superpower. Uh, bee boxes can be used to store an unlimited amount of a single species, neatly sorted based on their traits. To withdraw a bee, just select it in a storage icon and you'll be able to take out any queens, bees, or blessed bees of that type. There we go, I've already completed that one. I do like that it will retroactively give you uh, credit for things. Now you have an apiary, you'll be able to start crossbreeding. When you create a queen in an apiary, it will inherit a selection of traits from both tra bees. You can become a hi and can become a hybrid. Craft a predictor to help predict offspring traits. Hybrid queens have a chance that their offspring will mutate and become completely new species. To get started crossbreeding a common and forest bee together into a common forest queen and see if you can get a verdant species as one of the offspring. Also, uncapping frames. Instead 
of making honeycomb, bees in an apiary will slowly fill up any frames you've put inside. Instead, when filled, you'll need to uncap the frame before you can extract any of the goodies inside. Craft an uncapping bench and open it up, place a filled frame on any of the left side input slots and you'll see another handle appear. Uh, drag the handle down to uncap your frame. You'll need three scrapes per frame. You'll also get some nice gooey propolis, which can be used later. That is a very important one for glue production, actually. Uh, now then, so we want to place our new frame and for that, we're gonna move this lantern. I know, it was really, really pretty there. I, I agree. Uh, let me just pop that one down here. Where are we going to place this lantern? I guess we can have the lantern up there. I'll make a little, a proper little spot for it in time. But we're going to have that apiary on some solid ground in here. Let's, uh, oops, I don't want the barrel on my hot pot. There we go. Uh, or rather, attach my cursor. And here we go. Our apiary. It can only hold three frames because it's a basic apiary at the moment. Now, the other thing that I kind of want to do is once these queens are done, we're going to move them down here. That's kind of what I was leaving those spots for. So they're in line with our uh, verdant, uh, sorry, verge hive. And then we can have three apiaries over there when the time comes. But let's go ahead and pick out the best bees since we're actually going to be passing along these traits. I would say this might be one of the better ones for us. If anyone only has strong positives i mean this is kind of run of the mill but i think we'll we'll walk on the on the wild side we'll take you and from the forests uh, i guess you since there's really no better candidate there and let's pop you two in there and see what kind of queen we get hopefully we will get a common forest queen we've got yeah a common forest queen fantastic so this is showing us the the traits. We've got a dominant three, dominant four, dominant four, dominant five. But we do have recessives for the life, that which would improve it if we were just lucky that the recessive gene was dominant in one of it, its offspring. And a recessive lower um, value for... Let's have a look in here. Where are the traits? Fertility is the red and stability so that's how stable the species is versus mutate mutation so actually we kind of want a low stability to have a better chance of of uh, mutations except when we actually want a pure uh, uh, bred species with high uh, strong traits that we can pass on to others as you might already know, new species can be discovered by crossbreeding different species. Hybrid queens have a chance to produce hybrid offspring, which have a chance to mutate into entirely new species. You can use Predictor to see a potential offspring of a queen. This book will also give you hints on what species can be combined. You could probably ask Benjamin for help too. He might be grumpy, but he does know his stuff. Uh, so we have traits. Every bee has a set of traits depending on their species. When you crossbreed bees together, the queen inherits a mixture of these traits. So it's got lifespan, which determines how long the queen's lifespan will be. The higher the number, the longer her life. Productivity, how much honeycomb or frame products a queen hive will produce. Higher productivity means more goodies. And fertility, this is how many offspring a queen will produce at the end of her life. Higher numbers mean more babies. Stability, this is how stable a species is. The lower the number, the more chance of mutation can occur in a hybrid offspring. And finally, you've got some very specific ones. So behavior, this is the time of day the queen is active, which can be diurnal, so in the day, nocturnal, active in the night, uh, crepuscular, which is active at dawn and dusk, or cath uh, cathemeral, which is literally never stops being active. Uh, climate, this is the climate the queen prefers, can be temperate, tropic, which is hot, or polar, which is cold. Whether it's a rain lover, these bees love the rain and will be hard at work even on rainy days. Now, that doesn't mean that they won't be at work at other times. It just means that they won't hide in the hive when it's raining. Uh, snow lover, these bees love the snow and will happily work away when it falls. And aggressive, these bees are grumpy and won't work with you unless you use a smoker with their favourite flowers. Ah, so that's what the smoker's going to be for. Inheritance. By this point, you might be thinking, wait... Are these guys trying to sneak in some actual biology into a game? The answer is yes. Sorry, why are you apologising? This is awesome. As mentioned earlier, when you crossbreed two bees, the queen formed inherits a random mix of dominant and recessive traits from the parents. When a queen makes offspring, they too inherit a random mix from the queen's dominant and recessive traits. By crossbreeding, you can get certain traits out onto species that would never naturally be there. 
When you use a microscope, you can see the dominant traits as well as any recessive traits. I mean, we can see that in the bee boxes, which is quite useful. And then we've got our entries for the various bees. So the common bee. The common bee is found uh, practically everywhere on the archipelago. A generally friendly, dependable and well-rounded species. It forms the backbone of our modern ape, uh, apiculture. Special produce, bee pollen. Used by many as a homeopathic medicine. We've already seen that one. Conservation status, thriving. This species is saved. Then we've got the forest bee. Originally a marshland species, the forest bee has since migrated to lusher forest. It continues to build in trees, a survival trick originally used to protect the hive from swamp water. They produce the sticky pearls, and once again, thriving, thanks to Nana, and the verge bee. Unlike its land-based cousins, the verge bee thrives in water. While other species might avoid inclement weather, such as rain, this species will continue to be active. Special produce, we don't know. We've not actually uh, made a frame that will collect this, so perhaps that is something that we could look at. Now, all of the bees are presently quite happily snoozing away. Uh, I kind of want to bring my books inside, so let me grab one of these and grab all of the books as well. And we're going to place these in here, in, in lieu of not having a bookshelf yet. Eventually we will, but for now, all of the books can stay here. It seems that you have access to them no matter where they are, which is actually quite cool. I am a very big fan of that. And we've also got another barrel. So I guess this one will be our water barrel. So let's... Oh, no. I placed it down randomly. Uh, so yes, you can absolutely do that if you want to drive your friends not mad. Uh, so let's see if we can't pop it there. Uh, but I... Uh, this is very much a, an AVAC game or a dark AVAC game. I've got a cup of tea right beside me. So we have to, have to try at least and pretend... To not want to melt anyone's brains. There we go. Oops. There we go. I keep hitting this game one too many times. But all of our bees are asleep. So, give me just a moment. Ah, now I can be asleep too. Okay, there we go. It is 7.44 on day three. And we've now got three hives, though. The other two have not yet been loaded up with uh, frames. Our forest, common forest queen in here is doing a fantastic job. And there are also notes what flowers are nearby which is actually pretty cool so we'll have a bit of an idea of what we might get out of this but for us to be able to do anything with said frames we are going to need a an uncapping bench we also probably want a uh, predictor as well so let's go ahead and grab that though i don't know how likely we are to be making great use of that tool we'll still go ahead and we'll build one. Now I need another one. Ah, drag down blast. I'm going to need some more honeycomb for that then. Uh, but we're also going to need some more trees. So given that, let's go out and g gather some wood out in the forest. And on our way, we might be able to find a little bit more honeycomb from some of the wild hives. Now that I have everything I, I need, though, in terms of the hives, I'm generally not going to remove uh, the any more of the hives. I'm just going to uh, turn them over Get another queen going in each one. There we go. Let's clear that out. Oh, it was on this side. That's why I couldn't find it. Uh, there we go. And we'll, of course, collect up the honeycomb and any other bees as well, since then we can bring them back and slowly fill out our bee boxes. So we have a really, really solid selection of bees there to choose. Oh, wow. That was fantastically lucky. I can't imagine that we had very high chances of that, but we have. <laughs> wow. Content creator luck. We have already got, on our first try, a new bee. There we are. We have discovered uh, the verdant bee. The verdant bee was the first domesticated bee species in the archipelago. Breeding the verdant bee is a common rite of passage for many new beekeepers starting their apiculture journey. Uh, we don't know what it can produce, and we need to take it to a microscope to find out a little bit more. Uh, conservation status, loss. Rehabilitate more bees to save this species. I will do just that, I promise. But for now, let's, uh, let's relax a little bit and, and fill these out. So we want forest bees in there, please, and indeed, thank you, all of them. Uh, we don't have anywhere that we can put the verdant bee. I'm going to need another one of these bee boxes for that. So we're going to have to just wait on that one. Let's pop the predictor in there, though. Now, if we wanted to have a quick peek. Now, I believe this is a bug, so uh, bear this in mind, but I'm just going to showcase this. This shows, you know, it, it's a common, it's a pure blood common bee. But when I put it back there, its lifespan regenerates. Fairly certain that's not intended. 
I don't recommend doing that. I, I strongly suspect that is a bug and will be qu fixed very quickly. But if you basically just lift the bee out of hive and put it back in, it restarts its lifespan, which probably also makes it more productive as a consequence of that. Um, so definitely something to uh, bear in mind. Oh, this music is pretty nice. I approve greatly, actually. There we go. Now then, we've got plenty of honeycomb, so let's go ahead and make our uncapping bench. We're going to need two fra um, frames for that. There we are. And so we've now got our uncapping bench as well. I would like these in here. So let's pop you there. Now, to do this, we pop the capped frames over here. And then, as it was mentioned before, you need to uncap them. Three full draws of this will do. Again, this is something that you can automate later down the line uh, with a little bit of um, research, but for the time being, that is, uh, you know, you're just going to have to put it in the uh, the elbow grease to get things going. Now, cross beating. Uh, we've already gotten that. I'm actually kind of stunned that we managed to get that so quickly. Uh, rehabilitate. When you discover a new species, you'll notice their conservation state status in the almanac is lost. As you breed more of that species, you can release some of them into the wild with a rehabilitator. Releasing bees adds to their conservation status, going from lost all the way to thriving. Conserving a species is its own reward, but you might make a name for yourself if you do. I wonder if you'll end up with, like, magazines. I wonder if you'll you'll get magazines out of uh, conserving a species. That would be fantastic. Right, and capping frames. Instead of making honeycomb, blah, 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 we've already gotten that one done. We've got 10 propolis extracting honey. With your uncapped frames, you can now spin them senseless in an extractor and shake them down for every last drop of honey. That seems a little bit violent. Uh, you'll need to put uncapped frames in the left input slot. Once, you've, uh, once you do, you'll see another handle appear. This time, you need to pull down the handle to start spinning the extractor. The faster it spins, the quicker it will process your frames. When a frame is spun completely, you'll get a whole bunch of items based on the species of the bee as well as honey. Finally! I agree. It has been a long, long while coming, uh, must confess. We can also make sawdust bricks out of glue. Uh, we make glue out of the propolis. As far as I'm aware, that's the only thing you use it for, so I may as well just convert all of it into glue. Uh, we will need glue quite a lot of some wooden planks, some stone to make the extractor. That's going to take me <laughs> a little bit of time to get on with, so if you don't mind, I'm just going to crack on with that. That being said, do we have enough planks? We don't, but I should be able to make enough planks to set up the rehabilitator. We're not actually going to use that because we have exactly one of those types of bees, so we don't necessarily want to release it, but having this built would be nice all the same. Uh, we can perhaps have that up top. The way this works, if you click in there and you put a bee in, it will release. It's pretty much any bee is allowed, although it's just showing the common bee there. But uh, that will then get released into the environment. And once it's off in the environment, it improves their conservation status. It takes quite some time, I imagine, to get that conservation status up a level. Like, it's not just going to be every time you release one bee, it works. But uh, who knows? Uh, there we go. We've got a magazine rack as a reward from this. Where shall we pop that? Shall we pop it over here? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, oh, you actually put the magazines in there. That's actually quite cool. Okay, maybe I'll go and collect uh, Nana's magazines. Uh, Nana's magazines and Nana's magazines. We'll leave them with Nana. Uh, but let's pop in these frames. Hither and Yon. Two in each one will do nicely. There we go. Now, I'm going to be keeping hold of our special new bee, and I would like to try and get another one if I possibly can. Um, let's see. Let's go with you again. There we are. I take you out and a forest bee. Uh, we've got three, four, fives. Let's actually aim for the low stability ones if we can. So given that, I'll take you. But let me have a look. Do we have a low stability bee? We don't really, but we have none that have fours in everything and then a, a, a low stability uh, so we'll we'll just go with the bees that we've got right now that's fine now let's pop you in there there we are see what kind of bee we get there and I guess we could do the same on the other one as well just try and get as many as we possibly can this is a for uh, forest common 
interestingly enough, so I, I guess I'll take you. Now, there is a possibility we'll end up with a pure blood common out of this, but sure, we'll, we'll just go ahead with that. I'll just grab the four. There we go. And we'll pop you two in there and see what we get. Did I put them in the wrong place? I absolutely did. Uh, there we are. Now, what have we got over here? We've got a yeah, forest common queen there. And a common queen. It's a purebred. But that's fine. The main thing we need is the propolis so that we can get all of the glue. Oh, wow. We've got so much honeycomb over here. Uh, I believe that we can actually sell the honeycomb, so maybe we should go and do that. If we have a look, the, yeah, the sale price is relatively uh, good. So I'm just going to turn over these hives. And we will make a trip to town to make a bit of a sale of our bee gubbins. And once we stack everything back up in there. And whilst we're doing this, I'm just going to be wandering around with a bunch of uncapped frames in my inventory. Not exactly the best idea, honestly, uh, but oh well. Not a lot I can do about it. All right, let's pick a path through here. Though all those trees have grown. Fantastic. I put things back the way they were. Oh, everyone's got something to say. Nice. Hello. Oh, hey, Avak, how are you today? Waterproof is super handy. You can use it to make yourself all sorts of con containers to store the resin you get from tree taps. You can even make an infuser to start treating your wood with that resin. Okay, bye. It seems that they will all give me a bit of uh, advice regarding what I'm currently up to working on. What's a buzzing, cousin? Oh, don't you mind the professor. Four species is ace in my book. You don't let him tell you otherwise. Thank you. No, it's you again. What do you want now? Only four species rediscovered. I can see more species from here. Do better. Wow. Scoundrel. But we can pop you in there. Oh, you've got recessive on fives on everything but productivity. Very nice. Uh, you are behavior uh, daytime only, but we'll, we'll see if we can't breed some really interesting species over time that have uh, behaviors that are completely, uh, completely... Um, uncommon or, or not normal within nature for those species. Uh, oh, hello, dear. How are you getting on? I see you're settling in just fine with the bees, just as I knew you would. Oh, thank you, Nana. But yeah, if we if we could get like bees that are active twenty four seven, that would be amazing. Well, mate, what can I do you for? Looks like you're settling in just fine, matey. You'll be beekeeping master in no time. That's very kind of you to say. I've got a lot of stuff that I want to sell. Mountains of gabins, in fact. Please allow me to sell them. There we go. I would very much like to get a bottler eventually, because then I can uh, sell some uh, apicola, but uh, for now, I guess that's the best that we're going to do. But I think that's probably a good wrapping up place for this video. I really do hope you have enjoyed. As with the original, there is a lot of stuff that you can do, but quite a lot of it comes down to just passing a little bit of time, just hanging out and, and letting things, uh, letting the bees do their busy bee work and checking in on them from time to time. So, but as you expand out your, your kind of production area, build uh, proper gardens and start to very carefully manage the types of seeds that you're planting around them to have specific types of behaviors that becomes uh the it starts to to be a case that there's always something for you to do and uh th that is actually one of the things i like about the game it doesn't have any kind of time pressure but there is almost always work for you to do so you can be as busy or as chilled out as you want to be, realistically. Uh, can we get those in there? Perfect. Let's uh, just stack all of these up. Do we have any forest bees? We do not. We've got verge bees that we want to stack. So let's pop all of you in there. But that is going to be it for us. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you are interested in seeing a little bit more, then uh, do let me know with a like or a comment down below. And if you want to pick up Apico for yourself, there will be a link in the video description on where you can buy it. So that is going to be it from me and from Arpies, from Nana Belia, from Skipper, from Beatrix, from Dr. Benjamin, and of course from Barnaby. Thank you ever so much for watching and do take care.